Hey guys, a quick launch torque video just showing a little bit of its use in the shop. Thanks for watching. What's going on YouTube? Jimmy here. Another video I want to talk about my uh, launch torque scanner. I bought it to looking looking for a fairly inexpensive uh, competitor for my snap-on tools, which, um, as we all know, updates for the snap-on scanners about thirteen hundred dollars if you skip one. <clears throat> so I wanted to find something a little less expensive. Uh, I bought this, set it all up, had some issues with it at first, my own errors, and sorted it all out uh, with the help of uh, of the Launch USA people. Some really good people over there. I got this thing working good now, so I'm hooking it to a 2015 Ford Transit Connect. Uh, figured I'd go over some things with you, some of the features and some of the cool things it does for the for the price point. I think it's a, a great scanner so far from what I've seen. So uh, take a look at the dongle here. It comes with a it comes with a pretty cool dongle. I put the extension cable on it. You don't have to. You can plug it in direct, but uh, this extension cable makes it so. You're not going to forget it as easily. These lights show you that it's powered up and, and communicating. Um, <clears throat> now let's go into this thing and see what it does here. I'll show you. 2015 Transit Connect. Diagnostic. Please wait. Ignition switch is on the window up and get some of that background noise out of here processing we'll do health reports this will ping all the modules tell us what codes are in any of the modules um, it also has a, a tech tip thing which I kind of like even though I've been doing this quite a while it still helps a lot to see what other people have found for certain problems and at least leads you in the right direction. You still got to obviously do a thorough diagnosis and do some testing. But, you know, if you can eliminate 85, 90% of the potential problems and you know the, a smaller area to look in, then this is obviously going to save you a bunch of time. And while this is working, you got to get some Dunkin' Donuts going. So. Ah, that's good. Doesn't take long, uh, but it does take a, a few minutes. So at this point you check, bring up your data PIDs. PCM. See where this, this is gonna bring me up uh, a ton of data PIDs. I can select the data PIDs I want so that I can verify the catalytic converter issue, which would be front and rear O2. Um, and we can make sure that the normally what's happening obviously is the the rear O2 is active similar to the front O2 so the computer knows there's a problem with the converter it's not doing its job uh, let's see here read data stream sometimes these things will take you know sometimes it'll go in in 20 or 30 seconds sometimes it takes a minute or so EGR electronic throttle cooling fan engine cranking you can see the data pids are plentiful uh, let's look, look and see if it's going to need an oil change while we're in there. Grill shutter, heated oxygen sensor. Bank 1 sensor 2, bank 1 sensor 1. Mass airflow. Let's take a look and see what we have. Now we can graph these, which is another feature I like. Bring the engine speed up. Let's go ahead and run this up. Bank one, sensor two. Well, it won't let me pick sensor one for some strange reason. I like to have both on the graph normally to compare them uh, and show one active and one. One should be almost flatlining, barely moving up and down. When the converter's working correctly, you'll see the front O2 sensor doing this. 2,000 to 3,000 RPM. I'm at 3,000 right now. <clears throat> Lots of lights on the dash like Christmas. 
So normally you want to see the front O2 sensor active and the rear O2 sensor should be just like a barely doing anything. And when the cat's working correctly, this car's got 133,000 miles on it. You can see this rear O2 sensor is super active. Now I can I can save this screenshot if I want to show the customer. I can email it to them or send it up to the front desk by pushing the screensaver button. So we can see that obviously that this the cat's not working very well. You can see the numeric value as well as the screen graph. I'm gonna get them taken care of. That way they can get to your house and service your AC. <laughs> these windows up get a little quiet for us all right I'm gonna go into diagnose auto detect connecting the VCI all right let's see here reading the VIN this car has a uh, washer problem. It also came in missing the right side wiper blade, which is really odd. But she complained that the washers don't work. I've already taken the wheel well open and uh, put my test light in there. It definitely turns on the washer pump very momentarily, maybe two tenths of a second and shuts it back off. So I'm gonna try to use this uh, launch torque here and see if we can figure out why. I'm hoping there'll be a code or something. It'll th it has a bad sensor. It thinks the washer fluid's low or empty. I did uh, check that. Obviously, it's full. But let's see what we can find. Health report. Ignition's already on. <clears throat> has an ECM code. No check engine light. So it must not be an emissions relief. There's different tiers to the uh, <clears throat> check engine light faults. Obviously, if they affect emissions, it's more urgent to the Fed. So this must not be a bad one since the check engine light's not on. This car has a lot of modules. Probably somewhere between 40 and 70 modules. Mercedes GLK 350, little SUV. So every single electronic switch um, is a module basically in this car and they all just communicate over can lines. None of these are hardwired switches like the old days when you push a button it commanded a relay and performed the function. All these modern vehicles you push a switch it sends a signal to a computer and then the computer to do 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 58% lot of modules lot of modules. We'll see how many it says there are when we're done with this list. I'm sure it's quite a bit. Digital audio broadcasting module, the audio command module, audio command display module, instrument cluster module, Como Embrace communicating module, telematic services, etc., etc., etc. All right, now we've got some codes. I had to put a jump box on it because of the bad battery. Customer hasn't approved the battery yet, so I just put a jump box on it so I can finish getting codes at least. We'll install the battery, <clears throat> clear codes, and see what codes come back. But um, power to circuit 30G is outside the valid range. The limit value for electrical voltage has been attained. Well, that, yeah, that's our battery caused that one. The wiper motor has a malfunction, is a fault due to over temperature. Interesting. Central gateway. Compare all my results. I can check for each code with code assist or I can clear all DTCs And that's what I'm gonna do right now And then I'm gonna put the battery in and go through and run these tests again and see what codes are still there Probably have to road test the vehicle too to run it through a run it through a cycle uh, If you don't do a drive cycle a lot of times it won't even test most of the potential codes you could get Some of these are caused by the battery so we're going to see what's going on with this wiper washer system after that's taken care of. And there you go. It's going to clear the codes out pretty quick. It's processing my code clearing. Clear fault memory completed. All right, guys. We're going to uh, put this battery in this bad mama jamma. And uh, 
restart our diagnosis on the wiper washer system once we know we have a good battery in it so we don't have any fault. Hope you guys enjoyed this launch torque video. I'm going to make a more in-depth version coming up real soon. Watch out for it.